Welcome to our fourth video in our video series on CAT prac exam from the November 2022 here for grade 12. And the previous video we looked at the Excel question and question four is another Excel question. So let's get into it. So here is question four, which is another spreadsheet question. I've already opened up the spreadsheet called four sightings. It's over here and make sure that we are working on the right sheet. So it says lines worksheet. So let's come over here. We are on the lines worksheet. So that's great. So let's start off with 4.1. Insert a function in D3 to determine the most lines seen in any game drive. So let's go look at the data in D3. There it is. The most lines seen. So this is the number of lines seen. If I can see that value and we want to find the most lines seen on one of the game drives. So each one of these is its own game drive. So we're basically trying to find the biggest value, which is the max value. We're trying to find the max value of this column G. So let's go try it. We're going to type in equals max and we're going to do the column G7 and we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom, which is going to be quite a bit all the way down, which is going to be G105. So which one of those is the biggest? So I'll close the bracket and we can see that 14 was the most line seen on a particular drive. It's only one mark, so it seems like it's appropriate for that question. 4.2, insert a sum ifs function in cell D4 to determine the total number of lines seen at that particular camp where the sightings included cups. So there are two criteria. We first want to look at which camp it is and we want to look at if there's, there have been cubs that were sighted. If those are both true, then we want to sum the total number of lines C. So there are two criteria there. So that's why it's quite a lot of marks here. So let's have a look. So how do we know if there were cubs seen? So the, the cubs would have to be a true. Okay, so we're looking for that to be a true for it to be a club scene. And we were want to see that the particular camp was, I think that particular camp, Mpili camp, I think that's the camp that we were looking at. So we want to, in this cell, we are going to use sum ifs. Now, now sum ifs work slightly different to a sum if, where the sum range is done first. And then we do criteria range and the criteria, criteria range, criteria. So... We first want to look at this. What are we summing if we meet our criteria? So it's slightly backwards. So we're going to sum the number of lines seen. So that's going to be all of these values here. We want to only add them up all the way to 105. I think it's the last right there. We're going to add up all those values. I'm going to put a comma here. All those values we must sum, but only if they are cubs. So how do I know if I cubs? So now we're going to do our criteria range. Our criteria range will be the exact same range, but in the column H value. So H. 7 to H105. So all of those cells. And what's our criteria for this red block? We want the criteria. I'm going to put a comma there. The criteria for this red block is that it must be true. Now, because it's a criteria, remember our criteria tends to be in double quotes. So I'm going to put it in double quotes. Okay. So true. Look for a true in this red block. And the other criteria range will be if we are looking for that particular campsite, which is in Peely Camp. So let's select the same number of cells, but in the C column. So let's go all the way to the bottom now. Boom, boom, boom. All the way to the bottom to 105. Right a long way down. There we go. So now we've got a purple block. Now make sure that your numbers are correct. 7 to 105, 7 to 105, 7 to 105. Now in the purple block, what are we looking for? I'm going to put in double quotes. We are looking for it to equal to Impili Camp. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. So that's the value that must be in the purple block. True must be in the red block. And if those two conditions are both true, like that is true, that is Impili Camp, then we're going to add that 10 to our sum. And we're going to add all the values in the blue block. I think that's correct. Press enter. And there we go. We've got 84. That seems to be correct. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Insert a flick up inside A7. So let's go to A7. A7 over there. We want to go there to A7. And we're going to insert a VLOOKUP to display the surname of the ranger based on the ID of the ranger in a list in the rangers worksheet. So let's have a look at what they want. So we want to know that's the ranger's ID. But to get that value, we need to look in here in this table. So we're going to look for that range. There it is. And then we're going to go across and get that particular range's name. I'm correct. Is it, or just the surname actually. So we're just going to get the surname, which is the third block. So remember we're dealing with column one, two, three. That's the third column that we're going to get the data from. So how do we do a V lookup? So it's a vertical lookup. They gave us a clue that it was vertical. So we can say equals V lookup or flick up as I call it. So what are we looking at? We are looking at this particular cell, not all of them, just this one. We're looking at this BR ampersand field, just that one. I'm looking for that field, press comma. Okay. So now we press the comma. Now we're going to go and find our table in the ranges worksheet. So click on ranges and we select all the data except for the heading. So I'll select the top one there, boom, and go all the way across, all the way down. So these are all my ranges. So there we go. Now, because 
I need to be able to copy this down. I want to make sure that this table never shifts down. It mustn't move down. It must always be this table. So I'm going to press F4 at this moment in time. Dollar signs to make sure that when I copy that formula down, it doesn't shift. And then I'm going to put a comma. Now I'm going to put a column index. Which column are we getting the data from? This is column one, because remember our table's this block. It's not the third column in the spreadsheet. It's the column that we refer to in our table. Our table is this block here. So column one, column two, we want the surname. So that's going to be the third column. And now the last one is the range lookup. We put a true if it's an exact match or appropriate match. We could put false for an exact match because we're dealing with text. But because it's sorted, it doesn't actually matter too much. I think if we leave it like that, it should be fine. And we can test it if I press OK. Boom. So there we go. Brown. Was it brown? Was it correct? So that person, yep, that was brown. And so if I drag this down, we should see none of these values should change. They should stay the exact same. Did you see that they stay the exact same? There we go. So then we know that it's working. That's what I do, especially when they give us one block. I always copy it down to see if it works for all the others. Then I know I've got the formula correct. So that is the V lookup. So remember, you go V lookup, which cell are we looking at? Then you go to your table, make sure that you put dollar signs around it by pressing F4, and then which column in that block of tables do you want to use? So that should work. So let's move on to the next one. We nearly, that's a very short question. I think there's only, there's only two more questions. Game drives are classified as follows. The morning is anytime before 12 o'clock. Afternoon is between 12 and 5.30. And after 5.30 is night time. Okay, so now we want to determine, instead of nested F, okay, we nested F in D7. So let's go look, where is D7? D7, there we go. We're going to use that one. And we are going to classify the game drive using the following information. So depending on what time of the day. So whenever we got a range of options, that middle option always is the most difficult one to work out. So I always stick to working out the ones on the top and the bottom. So let's work out with morning. So we know if it's before 12 o'clock, it's going to be morning. So let's so just also take note here. They say that we must use the value in E7, which I think is the starting time, but we can also use the time of day in cell J1 to 03. So if we look over here, you see there J1 03, they've actually given us the times over there. We can actually use those two blocks for the time because it's got the time quite nicely there. So yeah, so here's where we're going to put the formula D7 and we're going to look at that particular starting time in E7 to determine based on that. So let's start with that. So we can say equals F. If the starting time is less than, I think it's not including 12. No, because 12 is for the afternoon if it starts at 12. But if it's before 12, they're not including 12. If it's less than 12, I can just click on that block there. They give me a little help there. If that's the case, then it's going to be morning. I'm going to type in the text morning. So that's my first scenario. Okay, now just take note, if I copy this formula down, I want the E7 to be E8, E9, that's correct, but the O2, I don't want that O2 to copy down, so I'm going to click on that O2 and put dollar signs there, press F4, so that that is locked, so when the formula copies down, it always refers to block O2. Remember, whenever you've got like a whole table of values, and you're referring to a value outside of that table, it tends to have a dollar signs around it. The third criteria is for when it's false. Now, false has two possibilities. It's either going to be afternoon or night. Now, the easier one to calculate is the night one, because I can just check if it's greater than that value. I'm going to, in here, put a second if statement, so this is a brand new if statement, and this if statement is going to check if the starting time, which is E7 as well, if that is greater than 5.30. If it's greater than 5.30, then it's in the, what did it say? I think it said night time. If it starts so starting from 5.30, it includes 5.30, so we must include it. So let's go, if it's greater than equal to 03, then it's going to be night time. And the false part to that, well, if the false part is if it's not morning and it's not night, then it must be the afternoon option, which would be the middle option. So I'm going to put in the text afternoon as that option. Now take note, I'm going to close the bracket for the inside if statement. And now I'm going to have to put another close bracket, which is for the outside if statement. And just like we did with O2, remember we made dollar signs there, we're probably going to make O3 dollar signs because we don't want that purple block to copy down. We want it to always stay O3. So I'm going to click there, press F4, so that there are dollar signs around the O3. So I think that's correct. Let's see. According to this, 530 should be 530 or more. It should be night time. So if I copy this down, then the, those values should stay the same. Let's copy it down. There we go. It seemed to go all the way. Let's go all the way down to afternoon, see if it changes. There we go. So none of them changed. They changed color. That means our formula must be correct. Okay, so that's great. So let's move on to the final question, 4.5. Each game drive lasts 2 hours and 45 minutes. Insert a time function in E7 to display the time of the game drive will end. 
Okay, so E7 in F7, sorry, in F7. So let's go to F7, go up there, F7. We must basically add two hours and 45 minutes onto that time. We can add onto a time. So let's go equals that block plus two hours and 45 minutes. Now I'm basically adding it as a clock. So I'm going to type in time, open bracket, and we can say how many hours, how many minutes, how many seconds. So we want two hours. So I'm going to put a two and we want 45 minutes and then we want zero seconds. So if I add that on, so if we think about 530 plus two hours and 45 minutes, two hours after five o'clock will be seven o'clock, 730 plus 730 plus another 45 minutes would be 815. If I'm correct, 815 or 2015, that is correct. And if I copy this down, it should work for all of them. There we go. It does work for all of them. So there we go. We know that it's working correctly. I think that's the last question. That's all the Excel done. Thankfully, now we can move on to databases. Please support the channel by clicking on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And also follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education and get the links in the video description for all the things that you need. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.